The tech world and much of the broader world was transfixed once again today by Apple as the company unveiled its latest slate of hotly anticipated new products. But we were the only ones invited backstage for the big event by Apple's CEO himself. Here's World News Tonight anchor David Muir. David, how are you? I'm glad you're here. A high stakes day for Apple. And we were there for the exclusive first look behind the scenes as CEO Tim Cook unveiled Apple's latest salvo, the high tech battle for supremacy. One more thing. Just moments before Cook unveiling the Apple Watch with a sleek video celebrating the bling and beauty of it all, the company's first brand new product in four years. Today, we are launching the biggest advancement in the history of iPhone. There have long been questions about when Apple would innovate again, when they would introduce the next product. And tonight, they have Tim Cook backstage with his own Apple Watch. The Apple Watch. Is this the moment for you, the moment of your career at Apple? You know, this is the, a moment for Apple. I don't really think about myself that much, but uh, it's an incredible moment. I think it shows innovation is alive and well in Cupertino. In the same room where his former boss and mentor, Steve Jobs, unveiled the Macintosh computer 30 years ago. It was 1984 Steve Jobs was on that stage. It was. Were you thinking about that today? There's not a day that goes by that I don't think of him. And this morning, being here, uh, I especially thought about him and I think he would be incredibly proud to see uh, the, the company that he left us, which I think was one of his greatest gifts to mankind, was the company itself, be doing what it's doing today. Apple again showing how it stays ahead of the increasingly intense competition. The smartwatch combining health and fitness monitoring. Are you closer to your goal? Very close. Right now we only did 50 seconds of running. 50 um, seconds. You, you've burned five calories. And tonight here, the first tweet ever from an Apple Watch. You'll actually be able to send voice-activated tweets from your Apple Watch, and we're going to give it a shot. How fun it is to send the first tweet ever from an Apple Watch, period. See you tonight, period. Tonight, that tweet has been sent. And look at what else it can do. So the faces of your friends actually come up on the watch. Yes, so you just tap on them, and then you can communicate with them like you always do with messages or answer a phone call. Even your blood pressure, your heartbeat. I can actually feel your heartbeat. Yes. Through your watch. Yes, you can. So show me how we do this. So I just put my two fingers here, and then I'm sending that to my friend who's wearing a watch. The day of stagecraft didn't end there. These are the new iPhones. Cook's unveiling of the iPhone 6, 4.7 inches, and the iPhone 6 Plus, 5.5 inches, and thinner than its previous versions. And there's something else it can do, because today, Apple also announced Apple Pay. You can hold your iPhone or your Apple Watch at the checkout. No credit card needed. It's interesting. I read the headlines going into today, and there were a lot of people who said Tim Cook is going to walk onto that stage and kill the credit card. <laughs> Did you? I think that we uh, put a dagger in it. But in an age where everything can be shared, intentionally or not, should we be worried about privacy? The, the most common concern I heard in the tweets that I received mm -hmm. today were about security, mm -hmm. particularly with the headlines about the iCloud. And, and w when you see celebrities get their photos hacked, yeah. people think, well, these are famous people. And if they're not protected, then, then what about us? So to put all that information into a watch, can you assure people at home that there is going to be very tight security. David, we wouldn't be doing it if we didn't feel like that. We wouldn't do it. We feel like we're making a leap in how secure things are. The fact is the existing system isn't secure. The credit card system isn't secure. It's not one that you should feel great about. For years, Apple has heard the criticism about how many of their products are made overseas. But tonight, Tim Cook telling me creating American jobs is his priority too. Is Made in America still important to you? It's critically important. In, in fact, between the watch and the iPhones that you've seen, uh, we will have uh, parts or materials or equipment made in 22 of the 50 states. When you say it felt amazing, for you, was it a defining moment in your career here at Apple? Those really aren't the terms that I think in. I think about Apple and Apple's employees and our broader ecosystem that includes the developers and, and uh, suppliers, etc. And for all of them, today was a very important day. But with the world now seeing this Apple Watch for the first time, what is the secret to getting people to wear a computer on their wrist? The 
answer coming from a man who rarely speaks publicly. It's great to see you in person that you, you exist. <laughs> Apple's legendary senior designer, Johnny Ive. How did it feel? It felt good. I mean, it, it's a um, it's a shocking transition when you go from when we were working on this for three years, and it's a relatively small a small team. So it's it's a it's a big transition from us from from working quietly together on something to then suddenly um, millions of people know what you're doing. That watch will have millions of design combinations. People say you have led the charge when it comes to making this watch something that people want to wear. Well, I mean, I've been lucky enough to be, be part of um, the design team for a long time now. Um, and we've always tried to make products that, that, that people um, don't begrudgingly use, but that they want to use. And I think that the, the bar for that is very high when it's something that you wear and it's something that you're going to wear all day and every day. And so we worked extremely hard to make it an object that would be, one, it would be desirable, but it would also be personal because we don't all want to wear the same, so. the same watch. That applause extending across the country outside this Apple store in New York City, a married couple lining up days ago. This will be our eighth day. A patient band of early birds in for the long haul. The new eye products won't be on sale for weeks. Hopefully we can get out of here sooner rather than later. Before um, the 19th? <laughs> yeah. But we're, I mean, we're thinking it'll probably be 10 days from now. Cook's final thoughts on a game-changing day that he says would have made his mentor be. You told me you began designing and developing this watch after Steve Jobs died. Do you, do you think he'd be smiling at what you announced today? I think of him every day and uh, I miss him dearly. But today, I, I think he's smiling. For Nightline, I'm David Muir in Cupertino, California.